Uh, well, I'd like to thank everybody for having me at the Covedale Library, and I especially want to thank Mr. Paul Cook for organizing this. I know it's a lot of work and effort to organize a meeting, and and uh, appreciate you for doing that. And uh, I know pa I've known Paul for a, a number of years. Paul is a good guy. We go we go back a couple of years, don't we, Paul? And uh, we did a story on the Norwood case together, and that was a real interesting case. And uh, I, I don't I don't think we can even look into that enough. I think there's more to be looked into about that story for sure. Um, but uh, uh, I know Paul's got a, a real good, healthy curiosity of, into the higher issues, and I think that's that's a good thing to do is to be curious about things because you know there's a lot of people in the world today that they just they're not curious. They just don't have the inclination to ask the questions that I think need to be asked. And a lot of these things, uh, UFOs and, and whatnot, just go over people's heads. You know, they just don't, uh, they don't look into the subject. But, um, it, it, and it's the higher issues, like I say, uh, that warrant further scrutiny. And I'll be brief here. I won't take up any time, but I just... I just had a, a, a copy of something I was going to read from here because I'm no good at giving speeches. Uh, most recently, I picked up a newsletter dedicated to the skeptic. Um, and we, we've all seen these uh, skeptical inquirers or uh, Cincinnati rationalists or something like that where, where they have uh, a, a little agenda behind their magazines. And the read for this was only moderately interesting. Its data was presented selectively, indubitably cautious, and and they would tell their readers stay in touch with uh, skeptical news and issues and be informed uh, by our rational approach to uh, various topics and uh, connect with like-minded skeptics. But my question would be for something like that would be. While professing an interest in the subject of UFOs and various unexplained phenomena, um, the writers of a, newspa a newspaper or a publication like that would shamelessly tell their readers that their information is presented strictly from a skeptical predisposition. And uh, that, that agenda is based upon a platform in which all claims of anomalous phenomena can be summarily dismissed. Um, but but my question is is yet while p declaring itself to be a skeptical periodical devoted to encouraging lucid evaluation of pseudoscientific claims, any impartial reader of such a publication may question how objective the journal could truthfully be when certain conjectural grounds are established in advance. And and just for example, how convenient would it be for certain foregone conclusions uh, not in conformity with this agenda, how convenient would it be for them to simply discard that information? Uh, and I think, I think uh, that's not their intent, is, is to acknowledge an unexplainable. You are informed beforehand of their plot and purpose. Um, you are certain of their outcome. Conflicting data to them is damned. They just simply disregard it. So by broadcasting such ideological motives in advance, findings and results from their inquiries are sure to be in conformity with the cause that they profess. To the sensible analyst, I believe, all conclusions from such a partiality should be suspect. So preconceived notion will lead one into the beggarly depths of belief. And that's the, that's the, uh, the thing which... Uh, uh, creeps in and fills the, the vacancy caused by unanswered questions. But if we were to be completely honest uh, and open about these higher issues, uh, then I believe the quest for truth must not be hindered by belief and uh, agenda. So I appreciate you putting up with me, and, and thanks a lot.